Hi, and welcome to Think Tech Hawaii. This is a new program on Think Tech Hawaii called Indo-Pacific Compass, where we track current events and affairs happening in the Indo-Pacific region. Uh, joining us today is an investigative journalist in the Solomon Islands. His name is Ofani Aramai. He has a brand new investigative news website called In-Depth Solomon. So welcome, Ofani. Thank you, Chris. Okay. Well, as everyone knows, I'm Christopher Cottrell. I'm an independent journalist. I'm based in Bangkok. And I went to the Solomon Islands last November, and I witnessed some of the great um, and interesting and fascinating and perplexing um, trends happening to infrastructure, society, culture, and politics in the Solomon Islands. Um, the last few days, we've seen the Solomon Islands enter the world stage with a very historic trip by Prime Minister Sogavari to Beijing with Xi Jinping, as well as bringing delegates and athletes to People's Republic of China. So this is causing a lot of conversations in the Solomons, Pacific and internationally. So uh, Mr. Ofani Aramai, could you talk to us a little bit, one, about yourself as a journalist, secondly, about your website, and then third, how you're gonna be covering these major current events at the Indo-Pacific. Right, thanks, uh, thanks, Chris, and uh, thank you, uh... Uh, for inviting me, you know, to be part of this uh, 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 part of this show, it's it's really a privilege indeed for me to uh, to be uh, on this show today. Uh, I I have been a a journalist for over twenty years, well, almost thirty years now, uh, working mostly in the print media here in the Solomons. I had a, a brief stint in the Republic, Republic of Palau, uh, where I worked for around, about two years there uh, on, a, on a newspaper. Uh, but mostly I spend my time working here in Solomon. Uh, I've been, you know, uh, editor of uh, the Solomon Star previously. And uh, two years ago, I was with the other paper uh, called the Island Sun, where I was also uh, the news editor uh, up until uh, towards the end of last year when I decided, you know, to step out and start uh, In-Depth Solomons. It's uh, a investigative newsroom uh, uh, established specifically to, to fill up a gap that has been you know, absent that has been vacant or void uh, from the journalism landscape here in the Solomons. Uh, you know, I've been I've been on both uh, newspapers all these times, all these years, and uh, one of the uh, difficulties, uh, you know, the papers here, uh, in particular as journalists who are working in the on these papers. Uh, is that we just don't have the time, we don't have the resources, uh, we don't have the, uh, you know, the, the 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 manpower to to engage, to involve in in depth reporting, to pursue investigative journalism because we have you know daily deadlines to meet, we have to get the paper out tomorrow, so there is simply a uh, lack of well an absence of uh, investigative journalism uh, in this country. And uh, In-Depth Solomons uh, was established to, to, to do exactly that, to fill up that gap. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah, so that's basically what uh, In-Depth Solomons uh, is here to do. Okay, so you launched in May 2023 with In-Depth Solomons, as you've explained. How did you put your team of journalists together? And what have you been able to accomplish so far just in the past two months? Because I think you have filled the gap, actually, in my terms of my reading in the island, uh, island media landscape. Uh, right. So I have with me right now uh, a team of uh, three, including myself. Uh, we are, all of us are journalists. My other two colleagues are uh, my former reporters at the Solomon Star newspaper. Then they went over and do their studies overseas. They came back and work with the, the national broadcaster. And then when they had me, you know, talking about this uh, new initiative, they 
express their interest to become part of uh, what we uh, are part of in-depth Solomons. Uh, then I, I, I actually secured a, a, a small startup grant from an organization called OCCRP, Organized Crime uh, mm. Reporting Project. I think most of you may have heard of the, that it's a network of you know, investigative journalists mm -hmm. uh, that sort of get us up and running. Eh? Uh, Solomon Island is, a, is a, a country with a very small economy uh, mm -hmm. that does not support, uh, you know, uh, cannot support uh, a profitable news organization. So I have to secure this uh, a small grant for a start, and then hopefully we can generate uh, some income as we uh, move along. So I have a team of three. Uh, we have a, we had this small office. Uh, since we've launched our operation, we uh, I think one thing we I need to explain here is that we are not daily we we don't produce daily news from mm -hmm. yeah, of course from time to time we would you know uh put up a uh, couple of stories on the news you know, on our news website but our core activity our focus is on investigative journalism yeah. uh we have identified a couple of stories that uh we are currently investigating uh, the two most uh, sort of big ones that we are uh, uh, looking into now, uh, uh, I can say it's to do with, uh, you know, unexplained wealth of, you know, some of our politicians, uh, okay. as well as uh, an investigative story looking into uh, a relationship between, uh, you know, the mining industry and uh, some of our politicians. So those are the two immediate stories that we are sort of putting our focus on right now. Okay, that, that's yeah. exciting. I look forward to seeing the development of those stories as certainly mining, um, as well as illegal logging, um, fishing rights, the, these sorts of issues, as well as transparency of governance come into sharper focus. Um, Speaking of uh, transparency of governance, uh, the uh, trip this week has of uh, Sagara to uh, Beijing has had opposition leader Matthew Whale call for greater transparency. So before we jump fully into that, uh, could we possibly talk a little bit about one, how you might be reporting and looking at the Pacific Games from an investigative journalist perspective? And then secondly, what does that this trip mean to those Pacific Games? Uh, well, first of all, <laughs> You know, uh, 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 Chris, uh, this this uh, current trip that our prime minister is on uh, in Be in Beijing uh, mm -hmm. came, you know, uh, as a bit of a surprise to many of us. Eh? It has never been uh, announced. Uh, you know, it's a standard practice here in the Solomons over the years that uh, before our prime minister takes an overseas trip, uh, they would normally issue a statement announcing to the people of this country that uh, yeah, the prime minister is going to this particular country to attend this particular meeting and so forth. Eh? Uh, that was not the, the case with the uh, current trip that our prime minister is on. Uh, I don't know for what what reason why they decided not to not to not to you know inform the public about what is a significant uh, 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 overseas trip for our prime minister. Uh, we at the in depth Solomon land of the trip a couple of days uh, uh, before uh, the prime minister and his delegation depart departed uh we have been sort of asking questions asking you know uh officials about it but 
they all they were all tight lipped about it. They just don't want to, uh, you know, release any information about it. But we eventually got confirmation from uh, uh, various sources within the government and uh, got a story out a day before uh, the prime minister flies out. So it's I don't know why our you know why the prime minister decided to keep it that secret. Uh, it's something that his officials have to explain, but it's quite weird. And uh, I'm not surprised that, uh, you know, the opposition leader came out and called on the prime minister to be open up and transparent about, uh, you know, the trip and uh, the agreements or whatever he's going to to sign with uh, China while he's out there. Yeah. Sure, fair and the trip is ongoing, so we'll see more, obviously, in the coming days. Have you been able to um, speak with any of the athletes or other business delegates um, who are on this important mission? Well, uh, one of our reporters did prior to uh, the athletes departing. Uh, departing. Uh, they've actually, you know, uh, hosted and the government and the games organizing committee here actually uh, uh, held a, a kind of a sending of uh, ceremony, sending of function to, to farewell the athletes. And uh, it's, uh, as far as, well, personally, it, it, it's a good thing, you know, uh, uh, for our athletes uh, to go out there, not only to China, but to Australia, New Zealand, uh, to 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 prepare for the games, it's it's important for the preparation, I think. And uh, but you know, this those who have been going over to Australia to New Zealand have been doing that uh, since the early this since uh, the beginning of the year. Uh, the eighty that have left to China, uh, you know, have just gone over now and. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's it's it it becomes a big thing for this government. You know, making a, a big uh, event out of it. You know, uh, organizing a a a uh, a farewell ceremony to send them over there. So it becomes okay. uh, probably that's how they want it happen. Uh, yeah, yeah. So will you be interviewing these athletes when they return? I mean, they're there for ninety days, if I'm, I'm not mistaken. Uh, they are. We we will definitely uh, be on the lookout. You know when uh, when they come back to see how they how how their preparation was like. Uh, but in 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 as far as uh, uh, investigative journalism uh, in relation to the games, uh, something that uh, we will be looking out for is the amount. Is you know how the 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 millions of dollars that the government uh, that the that the donor partners uh, have contributed uh, towards the game? How has it been uh, utilized? How has it been spent? Uh, yeah. You know we have experiences uh, in the past when this country hosted uh, original events like. Uh, the Pacific uh, Cultural Festival, where huge amounts of money that were, you know, uh, put into organizing these events have been, you know, unwisely spent, have been abused, have been, you know, reallocated and all that. So it causes a lot of, caused a lot of uh, uh, public outcry all, all during those years. Now, I think, this would be uh, something that, from an investigative point of view, we will be looking into as uh, we move closer to the games, and in particular after the games, to f just to see how, you know, funds, public funds in particular, donor funds, have been spent to to organize all this. You mentioned um, public outcry before a bit. Uh, how is the public? Um, how are the people in the streets, um, country, towns, fishing villages across the Solomon Islands 
of how are they talking about this trip and what does it mean to them uh, when they have uh, voices of um, non-transparency coming out? Uh, you, you, you see a lot of uh, uh, a lot of noise, probably. Well, you, you see a lot of uh, uh, Solomon Islanders talking about uh, the current trip, particularly on uh, uh, on, on on social media. Uh, that's where you get to see how Solomon Islanders normally react to uh, government decisions, uh, government uh outcomes and all of that eh? now yeah. uh with 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 the with the current trip that uh prime minister sogovare is currently on uh a lot of people have been sort of calling and talking about uh you know from now from uh, over the past few days uh, there has been there have been statements being issued from Beijing by the Prime Minister's uh, uh, press sec, uh, telling the nation that they have signed this, they have signed this agreement, they have signed that uh, particular document or that you know that paper, and so forth. So the the reaction from uh, members of the public here is that so as those documents, so as those agreements. That's what we want to. Uh, we want to to see so that we know what's in there. Uh, you may have, uh, uh, you know, uh, come across previously of this uh, security agreement that our government signed with uh, China, with Beijing, which we have not seen uh, its content up, up to this day. And now they are again talking about signing various agreements and uh, you know Solomon Islanders are saying well all good all, that's that's fine that's fine with us but so as these uh, the the contents of the of these agreements so that yes. we know what's in there okay what's in there for us you know yeah so as a journalist what are the sort of procedures that you need to are there uh, for example America we have the Freedom of Information Act do you have anything like that that will help you empower you to get a hold of uh, these uh, documents for transparency, as well as interviews with, say, cabinet members? Right. Uh, unfortunately, we we don't have that, uh, you know, that that kind of law that would, you know, empower us or uh, get us to have access to those information. Uh, I hope one day we will have uh, because they, we, you know, uh, we. Our leaders here have been talking about, you know, and freedom, freedom of information bill that uh, the government intends to bring to parliament, uh, but that has not happened thus far. But you know, as as a journalist, uh, I would sort of like the government to, I mean, our, our political leaders to to be open up, to be transparent about all this, eh? If what they are doing is for the good and for the interest of our people and nation, uh, why are we hiding this? Eh? Why are we hiding all these uh, these uh, uh, arguments from uh, the people of this country seeing them? Uh, if they are for the good of our nation, by all means, let us know about them and what's in there for us. I think as taxpayers, as citizens of this nation, uh, we have the right to, to see those uh, agreements. Okay. That's a very important comment you just uh, made there regarding about the whole, this is a whole of society issue. Um, so it is. how does this, uh, again, is a, put a burden on you as a journalist to go after um, I illegal activities, um, organized crime, um, illegal gambling, these sorts of issues? Uh, investigative journalism in uh, the Solomon Island is not easy, uh, like elsewhere. Uh, okay. But, you know, uh, I think uh, uh, compared to the past and today, a lot of Solomon Islanders are now concerned about the welfare uh, of this country 
and uh, from recent experiences, uh, a lot of Solomon Islanders are, you know, are prepared to to talk about things that are happening uh, within the system, uh, across across the system, and uh, it would not, it it isn't easy because uh, by doing that they are putting their jobs they are at stake, but uh, I have been you know over the past months been talking to uh, Solomon Islanders uh, who are prepared to provide information, who prepared to share their views, their opinions on on particular issues that we are looking into on, on various topics that are of uh, public concern. So uh, a lot of a lot of Solomon Islanders nowadays, especially the uh, the younger ones who are coming out from uh, university and uh, uh, join the government and have now taken up uh, positions of responsibility uh, and would want to see a country that is free of corruption, a country that uh, uh, makes out uh, a justice for all, uh, are preparing to to talk to us about uh, the issues that we uh, we we are looking into, they prepare to to provide information uh, uh, that we that we have been asking for. So I think there's hope for investigative journalism in this country. Uh, it's not easy, but it's something as an investigative uh, journalist, as an investigative uh, news organization, uh, we who be 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 going over we'll be going after we'll be pursuing uh no matter what okay no matter what so yeah great that you said there is positive public response to your new platform a willingness by uh, uh, officials i think maybe at the local level um uh, and the public really to start sharing and building a stronger conversation uh th that's the general gist of uh what you got done in the last two months but do you have a bigger roadmap for the uh, coming year towards the games? Uh, yep, uh, going forward towards the games, uh, we have a lot to do. Uh, we, you know, right now we are a very small organization with only three uh, 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 journalists. Uh, we, we are looking at building this, uh, this platform. We are looking at, you know, uh, building in-depth Solomon, uh, Sol Solomon into a news outlet that is truly independent, that uh, is fearless, and uh, that Solomon Islanders, that the donor community, that those out there who uh, who trust the, the the would be a uh, we want to build this to be a trusted uh, news source. Uh, we know that the games that are coming up is a significant, uh, you know, public event for our country. Uh, but we are also conscious of the fact that, you know, uh, it has to be done for the best of our people uh, and our country, and not just to please someone out there. So, you know. Uh, we 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 are very much looking forward to uh, covering the games and not only reporting on any successes but also looking at as I've said earlier on uh, the the big money that's been spent on uh, uh, preparing for this event. Do you have an idea of how much money has been presently invested for the one the stadium or other? Um other elements uh, around it well the 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 the, the stadium it, 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 as we all know is fully funded by uh, uh, China and other uh, donors like Indonesia uh, I think Papua New Guinea has also contributed towards building the infrastructures uh, Australian government as well as other donors have contributed uh, uh, funds towards 
uh, you know, preparing the athletes and uh, uh, building up facilities that will uh, help towards uh, hosting the game. Uh, it's it's thousands of dollars, uh, hundreds of thousands of dollars. Uh, that thousands or millions. Eh? Thousands or millions. Well, mi sorry. Yeah, it's millions of dollars uh, that the government has uh, uh, spent, you know, to, to host the games. Uh, and uh, right now, it's it's the the priority of the government. Uh, you know, recently people have been crying out about the conditions of our roads here and uh, uh, mm -hmm. the terrible conditions of our road. Uh, why 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 are the contracts not, contractors not coming back to 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 you know fill up the potholes repair the roads and uh, one of the uh, excuses that the government gave was that uh, you know uh, there's lack of funds because uh, the Pacific Games is the priority for the government and uh, most of the government funds are being spent on preparing for the for the event yeah okay well putting this on the world stage really this uh creates a lot of interest across the uh, pacific islands blue continent and there's going to be a lot of media interest in in the coming months uh is it ready to host uh this level of journalism if you will with australia broadcasting corporation already uh, new zealand uh fiji fiji broadcast corporation uh CNN, BBC, is our, is it ready for this media uh, um, ecosystem to arrive with the big big camera, if you will? It's going to be huge. It's going to be big, huge. Uh, the level of media coverage that we expect here, uh, the 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 organizing committee, the games organizing uh, committee itself has been preparing for this. Uh, mm -hmm. We at In-Depth Solomons are a very tiny part of the the uh, the whole setup, but uh, I think uh, it's uh, the the games organizing committee that has assembled a a large group of of media personnel who will who will deal with the the expected amount of uh, uh, journalists uh, who will be coming from across the region uh, to cover the games. Uh, our national broadcaster, the SIBC, will be playing a, a leading, role, leading role in all these. Uh, our media association of Solomon Island, I think, uh, will be very much part of the, 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 the processes leading towards the game. So, yeah, I agree that this is the, the, the amount of media interest in this event uh, is going to be huge. And we expect uh, large delegations from, uh, from across the Pacific, including Australia and New Zealand, coming here to report and, uh, you know, cover the games. Okay. So for uh, Hawaii, how can Hawaii media, <laughs> apart from Team Tech Hawaii, uh, Think about these games and why are they important for uh, viewers in Hawaii to pay attention to? Well, I think uh, when you look at what's going on across the Pacific uh, uh, at this time in terms of the geopolitical competition that's been going on, uh, Hawaii as part of the U.S., as well as being part, being and being being a Pacific island itself, uh, has an interest in this. Uh, you know, uh, this is a Pacific thing, and Hawaii being being a Pacific island, I think uh, uh, will have an interest. Uh, uh, Hawaiians would definitely have an have an interest in uh, in the games that's that's going to be held here in November. Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, thank you. 
Um, do you have any parting words of wisdom? We're up for time now about uh, your your message for in depth Solomon's and what what readers can hope for. Um, you know, in the in the coming months. Uh, right. Thanks, Chris. Uh, in depth Solomon's, as I have uh, uh, briefly uh, introduced earlier on, uh, is a new outlet. We started out of nothing. Uh, but we wanted to be the the we wanted to become uh, the news organization of the Solomons uh, in the future. We wanted to be truly independent. We wanted to fulfill this gap of uh, you know investigative journalism that has been absent from this country all these years. Uh, so we need. You know, we need uh, uh, support, not only uh, in terms of uh, equipment, but uh, financially, uh, you know, we, we've started off with a grant and uh, that will last us for only a year. Uh, we have a future ahead of us. We have a long way to go and uh, we will continue to, to rely and deepen on those who believe in uh, in in uh, democracy, uh, democratic values, those who believe in an independent uh, press, independent media, to to support us in any way you can. Uh, it's an interesting time uh, in the Solomons. In, it's an interesting time in the Pacific, where you know media freedom, in particular has come under uh, quite uh, uh, an intense pressure from uh, those who want uh, to keep uh, the media silent. So in order to, 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 for the media in particular to, to keep on informing uh, the public uh, providing trusted and reliable news, they, we, 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 we could definitely uh, rely on those who uh, believe on, in those values. All right, well, thank you very much for those uh, words of wisdom, Mr. Ovani Aramai. Good luck to you and to the In-Depth Solomon's team, the readers. Look forward to contributing more. I'm very happy that you came on the Indo-Pacific Compass at Think Tech Hawaii, and we'll be in touch more soon. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please click the like and subscribe button on YouTube. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Check out our website, thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.